Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and in this episode of the Fundamentals of GPU Architecture, uh, it's going to be a relatively short video. We're going to be capping off the last little section on uh, the SIMT core before we have our next video on you know, the landscape of uh, research in relation to the SIMT core. All right, and so you know, it being July 4th today, we'll just close it out with a very small uh, little topic here, which is instruction replay. So how do we handle uh, structural hazards? Right, so uh, we've talked previously, you know, in the one loop, two loop, and three loop approximation, all of these different, uh, you know, scheduling loops that we can consider, you know, you know, which warp are we selection for, you know, picking an instruction from. Once we, you know, pick the instructions, how do we, you know, where do we put them so that we can select from multiple instructions inside of the instruction buffer. And then, you know, finally we talked about how do we schedule register reads in such a way that, you know, we don't have to have some massively you know, multi-ported thing uh, that'll end up being very costly to manufacture, right? And so now we're going to bring up this idea of instruction replay, right? So uh, there's many causes of structural hazards in GPU pipelines, right? So uh, this could be as simple as, you know, in the read stage for the registers, we may just run out of operand collector units, right? So th this can happen, right? Um, so many sources of these hazards, right? They relate to the memory system. Now we haven't really gone into the memory system. That'll be the next section after we talk about um, kind of research directions and the you know, the kind of the landscape of research in this field. Uh, so you know, in general, a single memory instruction executed by a warp may need to be broken down into multiple separate operations, right? And you know, each of these operations can utilize a portion of the pipeline on a given cycle, right? So the question that we're really trying to answer, though, is what happens when an instruction encounters a structural hazard in the GPU pipeline? So let's kind of go back and let's think about what happens in a normal CPU pipeline, right? So the easiest thing we can do in kind of the standard solution is just to stall younger instructions, right? So, um, and we do this until the stall condition, right? Uh, until we can make further progress, right? So until uh, you know, something happens where the instruction that's stalling can finally proceed, right? So it can like, begin execution, or maybe it has all of its, um, you know, all of the arguments that it needs to progress forward. So, um, so this is okay in CPUs, uh, as it kind of says here, but for GPUs, this isn't really the great idea for two main reasons. And the first of which being uh, the large side of register files, along with uh, the many pipeline stages required to support a full graphics pipeline, um, distributing a stall signal may impact the critical path, right? And if we have to distribute a stall, stall signal and you know this impact in the critical path, right? If we're talking about you know something like graphics, which has you know quality of service deadlines, we don't want uh, you know we don't want you know how how fast we can process frames to be uh, impacted you know, by a stall, right? You don't want, you want your video to be nice and smooth um, getting sent out by the GPU. So this is not ideal uh, in that case, right? And so, uh, you know, this stall cycle distribution leads to need, also leads to the need to have additional buffering, right? So, you know, we don't know when a stall is necessarily going to happen. It'll just happen, but we need to be able to make sure that, you know, we're not losing anything during that time. So we have to add a little bit of buffer space up as well. Right, and this just increases area. Right, so uh, the second thing we need to do, right, so stalling an instruction from one warp, uh, it can cause instructions from other warps to stall behind it. Right, if those instructions do not require the resource uh, required by the instruction that causes the stall, throughput may suffer. So this is just saying that if one warp causes another warp to stall, that other warp may, you know, maybe it wouldn't have encountered a stall if it had gone first. Right, so we don't want this needless, you know, decrease in throughput necessarily. So how do we fix this? Right, so what's the, uh, what's the you know, strategy for GPUs? Right, so. Um, it's this idea of instruction replay, right? So uh, it's this isn't a completely new thing, right? So it exists in the CPU world as well, um, where it's used as a recovery mechanism, right? And this is for you know speculative execution, right? So um, when speculatively scheduling uh, a dependent instruction uh, upon a earlier instruction that has a variable latency, so this variable latency is often from the memory system, right? We don't know if we're going to hit in the L1 cache, the L2 cache. Maybe we have to go all the way out to main memory. Heaven forbid we have to go all the way out to disk, right? So, uh, for example, you know, loads may either hit or miss, right? So, uh, and if we have a design that's clocked at a high enough frequency, you know, 
may, uh, pipeline first level cache access uh, may take over four clock cycles, right? So some CPU speculative wake up instructions depending on lo uh, a load so as to improve single threaded performance. So, you know, in GPUs, we don't have speculative execution, right? We don't have branch predictors, so we don't, you know, choose a path. We rely on massive multi-threading to have multiple instructions that we choose between, right? So, um, so like I said, it tends to waste energy and reduce throughput, right? We want to save that space, you know, mainly for compute units. Um, so instruction replays used in GPUs to avoid clogging the pipeline and the circuit area and or uh, timing overheads uh, resulting from stalling. Right, so to implement instruction replay, you know, how does how can a GPU do it? Right, so like all these things, we have our guesses to how it's done. So uh, instruction replay in GPU, right? We can hold instructions inside of that instruction buffer, uh, either until it is known that they have completed or all individual portions of the instruction have executed. Right, so this is just saying that, you know, we'll just keep that. Um, you know that copy of the instruction around just in case you know if something happens we we still have all the information and we'll just keep it around until we either know that it's done or you know all the individual portions have finished and it's just waiting to finish right so that's going to go ahead and do it for this short video as always feel free to check out uh you know any of the other videos in this series as well as on the github page where we have you know all kinds of cool stuff we've got a new series on gpu micro benchmarking where we go over, you know, how do we use, you know, micro benchmarks to, you know, better understand the GPU architecture, as well as a CUDA programming one where we look into GPU programming with CUDA. But that's going to do it for today. As always, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.